A very good morning to everyone. Uh, welcome to this learning platform. All these students who are keen on learning about uh, how to appear you know, uh, in an exam, how to write uh, answers in an exam, I think this is for all of you. So we'll have an interesting session where I'll talk about how you can present your answers very well. Now, exam preparation is a step and being able to present your answers very well in the exam is another very important task. So that's what we will learn today. So let's have an interesting learning experience in the uh, one hour session that we're going to do today on preparation of exams and how to write your answers related to biochemistry. So I see a lot of students will be joining with us today. Once we have the students, we will start the presentation. You can post your queries, questions, anything that you want to ask about a particular topic or how to write an answer. If you have any personal questions as well, you can post in the chat and we will answer it. And at Prakara Learning, I think you have this, this is a unique uh, venture taken up by them where they're trying to bring in subject experts to uh, give you more orientation towards how to write an exam. That's a very important part because at the end of it, your grades, your score does matter along with your subject knowledge. So before I start the presentation, let me introduce myself. So I am Dr. Jyoti. I did my MSc Biochemistry and PhD in Biochemistry, and I have been teaching Biochemistry for almost 20 years now. So, apart from just uh, teaching Biochemistry, it's my passion actually to also talk to my students about how beautifully you can present a subject like Biochemistry on paper. Now, unlike other science subjects where you have to write a lot of theory, uh, you know, uh, do a lot of um, uh, diagrams. I think biochemistry is easier that way because you have pathways. Now, what's the best part is like, uh, you know, a scoring subject, if you're able to present a pathway in a holistic manner where you talk about everything and introduction to the pathway, you now how are the molecules present? What are the enzymes there? What are the energetics? I think if I am an examiner, I see a paper, with a full-fledged pathway having all the ingredients in it, then I think I would give you, let's say, if it's a 10-mark question, I would right away give you seven marks if your pathway is correct. And addition, if you're writing about the significance of the pathway and, uh, you know, what are the uh, diseases or uh, modifications associated with that particular pathway, I think you are good to get a full mark uh, full marks for your answer if you're able to present it very well. Okay, so that's the advantage of uh, scoring in a paper like biochemistry because uh, there, is, uh, there is a defined amount of information that is enough for you to present for a particular pathway. So that's what we will try to learn today, a ki some kind of questions that are there and how you will be able to answer it. Okay. So we will take some questions as examples and then I will, I've also put some answers on the screen, but I will also add a little more about how, my, how you can make it colorful. Now, one thing like you all must have done this when you were in school, but I think even now you must do that for a biochemistry paper. I think for science students, it's mandatory whether you're in school or in college, I think carry a set of color pencils with you, color pens, other than red, you can carry any other color pencils or pens and what you can do is while you are writing, highlight the important points on the paper. This is a very important um, a suggestion that I would give as a teacher because I see a lot of papers, a lot of students who write answers. Now they know a lot of content, but then the content is not presented well on the paper. You start writing a description like a textbook for an examiner. They don't have so much time to read every line of it and then start marking it. So how I want an answer while you put it on the paper. Now, the same thing, if you have to put that way the answer on the paper, I think even your preparation should be such 
that while you're preparing for a topic, I think you should start writing down or preparing it in certain headings. So for example, let's say I have an essay question. Now, what exactly do I want to see in an essay answer on any topic for that matter, whether it is in biochemistry, genetics, or biotechnology, any answer that you're writing, if it's an essay question, all of you should be mentally prepared to write an answer because you also have to look at the time. You have a certain time limit in which you have to, let's say, write about uh, four essay questions, uh, five short answer questions, and five very short answer questions. If that is your exam pattern, so you have to accordingly set your time. That's very important. The first thing you need to do is like manage your time. You should know how much time you're going to cater to each question. So let's start with an essay question. Now, it's always beneficial that you finish off your essay questions because there, unknowingly, you will spend a lot of time. So frame your mind. Let's say an essay question. If it's a 15 mark question, then how much of information you're supposed to write? So first divide it into uh, side headings. Now, these are the broader side headings that you can uh, make your uh, essay in. So let's say first start with introduction of the topic. Like what is the question asked? First understand what as a student are you expected to write on the paper? You need not give a, a two paragraph description about the topic that is not required. So just the first paragraph, the first few lines is introduction of the topic. For example, let's say they're asking you what are enzymes? What is the role of enzymes? Talk about the classification of enzymes. So what do I start with? First introduction, write three lines about what are enzymes and why enzymes are important for living cells or how do enzymes uh, differentiate living cells from non-living cells? How do they speed up the processes? What value addition an enzyme does to the metabolism of the cell? Okay, so we can start that way, give an introduction. Then definition, define uh, the biochemical definition of what an enzyme is. So you can say enzymes are molecules which will catalyze the reactions, which will speed up the reactions without they themselves undergoing any modification or any chemical modification. So do that, give the definition. Then give a talk about the importance of why as a student you should learn about uh, enzymes, what is the significance. Maybe you can start talking something about the Important. So you can give a definition of that particular, uh, after you define what enzymes are, you can talk about the significance of that particular thing. Significance is any kind of an importance that it has to the thing, or you can also talk about what relevance it has to the subject that you are learning. Okay. So medically, how important it is, what relevance it has, you can talk about that. Then we will move into because we're talking about biochemistry preparation or biochemistry answers, most of the questions that you have will either have a pathway or a reaction, or sometimes it is a sequence of reactions. So start describing what is the pathway. Immediately after the first few, few paragraphs of introduction and definition, give on a full page, on a fresh page, write the diagram or the pathway clearly with all the indications required. I will show you in the following slides what I mean by a encompassed pathway which has all the information. Then suppose because we are talking about an essay question, there is a question asked let's say on beta oxidation, on glycolysis, gluconeogenesis, whatever questions related to the pathways, it is always preferable to write the energetics. What do you mean by energetics? Whatever the energy transactions that are associated with it, that is how many ATP molecules are produced, okay, how much of energy is produced, how many NADP molecules are produced, these kind of energetics, how many ATP is used, how many ATP is expended, this kind of information, if we are able to give, automatically the examiner will know that you understand the subject very well. You understand the importance of how a pathway should be represented on paper. That's when it's an additional scoring. So if you are aiming for a grade A, if you are aiming for a good CGPA or whatever is your grading pattern, I think you need to add this. So while you are preparing for the exam, what are you supposed to do? If you are preparing in such a way that you are writing an essay answer, then ensure that you are writing the diagram. Below it, you are writing at least one net equation of the reaction pathway. 
and you're talking about how much energy is associated with it. So if I'm the examiner, I know that you are very well aware of the topic and you know what to present in an answer. That's when I will give you, let's say, almost full or 90% marks if you're presenting the pathway correctly. Then I would add, if I'm aiming for a very good grade and I want to present my paper very well, I will also add this in the end where I will talk about what are the deficiency disorders associated with it. In spite of it not being asked in the question, I can still do it. If, even if my essay question, they just ask, what is glycolysis? Describe the pathway. If the question is only that, but it's an essay question for 15 marks, let's say, then what I would do is last line before I conclude, I want to emphasize why glycolysis is very important. So I will just add one line about what are the diseases or de uh, deficiency things associated with it? What happens if the genes associated with it are mutated? You know, what happens if glycolysis is not happening, eff happening effectively? Something like that. I would, I would add just one or two lines about it before I conclude. So that tells the examiner that you not only know the topic, but you are very well aware about how to present it in the examination, right? So let's go into some uh, sample questions of how you can answer an essay question, right? For example, let's say you have a question like this, which says, define energy-rich compounds, classify them, and give a brief note on the biological significance of ATP. Very important question because we know ATP is associated with almost, you know, every metabolic pathway. This is called as the energy uh, currency of the cells. So we know ATP has a lot of importance. So any question, now something to do with ATP might come either in an essay question or in a short answer question or in a very short answer question. So I will tell you how much you should write if it's asked for an essay. Where can you cut if it's asked for a short answer question? And how? what should you present only if it's just a very short answer question? Okay. Now, how would I split my answer? I've been talking about uh, if it's an essay question, first I would decide how much of information I'm going to write because I would have prepared a lot of information about all energy-rich compounds, different examples, reactions. I would talk about all of them, but I don't have so much time to present and it's only a 15 mark answer. And I have, let's say, about 15 minutes to write about this. So how much I want to write? So that's the first mental preparation that you have to do. How much of information you want to present on the paper? If it's asked for an essay, if it's asked for a short, if it's for asked for a very short answer question. So let's say I would start first, I would uh, prepare myself for what are the side headings that I'm going to write the answer in. So first, coming to this particular question, let's say the question asked is about energy rich compounds. Now, why do we need energy in the living cells? Whatever we are talking about uh, metabolism, whether it is anabolism or catabolism. So we need energy to carry on anabolism, that is synthesis of molecules, or catabolism, that is breakdown of molecules. So I can say that metabolism is a very important part of living cells. It includes both anabolism and catabolism. And to carry out any kind of a metabolic reaction, what is very important is energy. Where does the cells get their energy from? There are a list of energy-rich compounds, which because they themselves have a lot of negative standard free energy, they provide that free energy for the reactions to be carried out in a forward direction. So I define that. Then I will define what are energy-rich compounds. As I said, they are the compounds which have a lot of negative free energy with them. So they break down, give rise to energy that can be used for metabolism. Then you classify what are the different types of energy-rich compounds available. You can list them. Then come to your topic because your question has three components. It is asking what are energy-rich compounds, classify them, then talk about ATP. So the last two parts of your answer will be where you will talk about what is ATP, draw a structure of ATP, Talk about the role of ATP in metabolism. That is how ATP ADP cycle will take place, how ATP converts into ADP in the process of getting converted into ADP, how it releases inorganic pyrophosphate that is used in the process of energy metabolism. So if this much you're able to represent, then I think that's a perfect essay answer to give for a question like this. So look at it. How did I, I just added major, majority of the points to give you a glance of 
how that particular uh, answer would look like. So let's say first I give an introduction, what are high energy compounds? So these are the ones that are present in biological systems and they have a lot of negative free energy. So whenever they release, they give rise to negative standard free energy that can be used for the reactions. Then you classify the high energy compounds. They are classified into five groups. What are the groups that are there uh, that can be classified in living cells as a high energy compound? Now, here what you can do is suppose you can't write very fast and let's say you don't want to spend so much of time on this answer and you're not very sure about what each of these will do. You can stop it here. But if you have prepared very well, you know about high energy compounds, then quickly what you can do is next to each of these, you can just try one line about what are pyrophosphates and how much energy is coming from pyrophosphates. And maybe you can give one sample equation if possible for each of those. That will enrich my answer beyond this particular level. Otherwise, suppose let's say you're not able to recollect and you think this is too much to write about all the classes of high energy compounds because the question asks only classify them. It's not asking you to describe all the high energy compounds. So if you're not very sure, maybe you can, yes, stop it here. Otherwise, I would suggest if students were preparing well, if you have your notes with you, because sometimes you will get only a short answer question on write about various high energy compounds. So in one answer, you can also encompass that, add one line about each of these. What if I do, uh, there is a short answer question on high energy compounds. I would just classify them into five groups. For each group, I would line write one line of definition, talk about of how much of energy it is giving and one sample equation where a pyrophosphate is providing energy to that particular reaction. So that part I will do. Same I will do with what enol phosphates are, what acyl phosphates are, thionyl phosphates are, and what phosphogens are. So I will give that and I will go ahead to ATP. So here you can see the structure of ATP, very important. So first I, I give a side heading, ATP, full form, adenosine triphosphate. Then I will draw the structure. Now, Always remember, whenever you are drawing biochemical structures, it is very important that you label everything that is there on the structure. So first you give the full form. ATP refers to adenosine triphosphate. Then you say ATP is called as the energy currency of the cells. Then next, you draw the image. So you can see on the image, you represent what is the sugar, what is the base, give one uh, thing. And then you represent the phosphoanhydride bonds, draw all the three because we are talking about a triphosphate. You have to represent alpha phosphate, beta phosphate, gamma phosphate, show the high energy bonds that are associated and draw the complete structure with the bonds. Now, sometimes, suppose you don't remember the structure of adenine. I understand totally that there is an exam fever. You're not sure, you're worried. But at least while you are preparing, you should have a basic understanding that suppose there is a question asked on ATP, at least you should remember that ATP is consisting of one sugar plus one base that is adenine plus three phosphate molecules. If you remember that, you can at least draw one sugar molecule to the sugar, attach one adenine. If you don't remember the structure of adenine, you can just write an adenine here and three phosphate molecules just represent O, phosphate, phosphate, phosphate. At least this simple version of an ATP has to be represented. If there is no diagram of an ATP indicating the high energy bonds, your answer will get only 50% marks because the question clearly asks, what is ATP? Define the biological significance and structure of ATP. So in biochemistry, I repeat again, the advantage is you have diagrams, you have pathways, you have reactions. If you're able to represent your diagram and the reaction sequence correctly or the structure correctly, 
with all the ingredients. That is for ATP, I have to show the sugar. I have to show the adenine. I have to show the phosphates with the bond, like how I'm representing here on the screen. If you are able to write a structure like that, I think that you know about ATP very well. Even if you have missed writing one or two lines about ATP, I would still consider as an examiner that you know about ATP. At least for one or two molecules, you should remember how much amount of negative free energy is coming out of the molecule. Then I very well know that you are aware of that particular uh, compound. You know that what is its structure, right? So, how do I describe? So, first, as I said, write what is ATP. ATP is adenosine triphosphate. It is the cell's energy currency. And there is so much amount of uh, energy that is coming out of ATP because ultimately, almost all the metabolic reactions in the cells use ATP as an energy-rich molecule. Okay. So, what is it made up of? It has adenosine. It has three phosphate groups. If you have time, you can describe the structure. It has an, a deoxyribose. It has an adenine base and it has three phosphate groups. And specify that these three phosphate groups, when break down, they give their high energy bonds. That is the reason why we are categorizing ATP as a high energy compound because this has three phosphate groups and all the three are connected with high energy bonds. So you should exemplify how and why ATP is considered as an energy rich molecule, right? Then, as I said, one reaction of how ATP is giving rise to energy. So ATP has three phosphate bonds. So when it breaks down, it can either give rise to ADP plus PI or it can also break down to inorganic pyrophosphate. So both pyrophosphate and pyrophosphate are the ones which will actually transfer this high energy to the metabolism. So if I know this part of it, then I think I'm very good to go. Then I give an overall reaction. How much of energy is coming from this particular reaction? over what is the negative free energy that is given by an ATP molecule and why I can take it as an energy rich molecule. Okay. So that's how I make my art complete. Maybe you can add one conclusion line because of its high energy and the ATP, ADP cycle, which is feasible in the metabolic uh, cells, active, metabolically active cells. ATP is used as an energy rich molecule in almost all metabolic pathways in the cells. So, you have one reaction example where ATP is used as an energy rich molecule. Done. Your answer is over. So, quickly we'll go back and see. What are we trying to do? We are trying to give an introduction to metabolism if possible. Then just define what are energy-rich compounds, give their classification. Here, we can stop at classifying them, not giving any further details about them because the question only asks about classifying energy-rich compounds. But if you know, you can add one one line to them about the place. Then by define what is ATP. In this Sure, you are showing indicate because of these three phosphate bonds, ATP is an energy example reaction, how much of energy it is giving done. So if I write an answer like this, and as an examiner, I would let's say out of 15, I will give you 13 total marks if it encompasses all these points. Okay. So while you keep in your mind, don't just blindly go on reading a textbook and just think that in the examination, I will try to write whatever comes to my mind. Remember, for biochemistry, a one-day batting will never work because you have to practice. So I was telling that for uh, biochemistry, a uh, one-day batting will never work because you, you should practice the structures. And you should know for every heading, for every answer that's given to you, how much amount of information you have to learn. Because let's say if you open any uh, standard biochemistry textbook, you have about an entire unit of sciences, but you cannot write so much of it in the examination. So you should know how much amount of information you are presenting. Right. So the next question that we will talk about is, let's say, glycolysis. The question is my favorite for any biochemistry. I know in teachers, glycolysis is a favorite question. So for example, generally, there is a question that's asked for sure in any biochemistry question paper. 
we will try to give a question on glycolysis either or not wherever possible because this is mandatory that so we will do how to write if there is a question that's asked on glycolysis so first define what is glycolysis as we have been talking about first we define glycolysis give the definition then describe so what is glycolysis this is basically a metabolic process that converts glucose into pyruvic acid then you give an introduction what is introduction where does glycolysis take place always remember whenever we are talking pathways it's very important that you describe the location where is glycolysis taking place okay in what cells does it take place why is it taking place so it basically takes place in the cytoplasm of a cell and it takes place both in aerobic and anaerobic organisms this is the most central pathway to provide energy okay then try to get it pathway because you brought a path So I'm so sorry to interrupt you, you ma'am. Yeah. Ma'am, the presentation isn't visible. Okay, fine, ma'am. Fine. Actually, there is. I think it's little. Yeah. It is little. Yes, yes, yes. Now it is good to go, ma'am. Proceed. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, location very important. Say what is where it is. It is cytoplasm of the cell, and. to tell that it takes place both in aerobic anaerobic organisms then go into the path so it consists of it is very important to define or describe the path because it has 10 enzyme catalyzed reaction so divide it this way it is takes place in three phase of this define what is separate phase is the phase that because is getting uh, ready to enter into the pathway to break down and propagate First five reactions of the pathway are called as the preparatory phase. The next five reactions are called as the payoff phase. In the preparatory phase, the cell uses some amount of ATP. There is in the payoff phase, it releases energy in the form of ATP and ATP. So that is the payoff phase. So define what is preparatory phase. Define what is payoff phase. Okay. It reacts in C. Suppose, right? Okay. So now we will look at this. So what are you two things? Now, if you are not a classic biochemistry student, then you are not practicing all the structures. It's okay even if you write the names of the compounds. Enough. You need not write the structures. But suppose you are interested, at least for reactions like glycolysis. because you know most of the basic structures like you know the structure of glucose you know the structure of fructose you know the structure of pyruvate at least few important compound structures you can draw okay or is it it is still okay if you are not able to draw the structures at least write the names of the compounds very important is that for every reaction you have to write the name of the enzyme very important okay mention the names of the enzymes names of the compounds and what is very important for an essay question when you are writing is represent these energy transactions that are taking place what do you mean by energy transactions in a reaction if there is any atp involved if there is any nadph or nadh involved if it is being used or if it is being given away you have to represent these energy molecules transactions because ultimately these energy transactions are ones which will talk about the energetics involved in a reaction sequence so what we will try to do is we will talk about each of the reaction represent their energy transactions and for every reaction show the enzymes that are involved in that particular reaction sequence suppose you think that you need not you don't have so much time to describe every reaction like generally what is expected in a essay question on glycolysis if you are writing start writing step 1 step 2 step 3 what happens in all the 10 reactions you should describe in one line that's expected of a classic essay answer but suppose i am the examiner if you are writing a pathway like this full fledged pathway with all the reaction sequence energy transactions and the enzymes it is perfectly fine even if you don't describe it step by step on the 10 reactions you don't have to describe because that takes a 
lot of uh, takes away a lot of your time so you can just give a representation like this very good clear representation and added you can draw structures that's like perfect very good okay then give an overall reaction how much amount of uh, nad uh, atp is used and how much is given away if you are able to write one overall that is you give two atp and two nadh the overall equation of glycolysis you can present then how can we end the answer in glycolysis there is for every pathway i am sure almost everybody who is studying biochemistry uh, at the graduate or the post graduate level will also talk about this very important aspect called as regulation of a pathway regulation means how can a cell control how much amount of glycolysis is taking place when to stop when to switch on the glycolysis regulation is very important so while you are preparing especially for pathways you can make this one line information or two lines about how the pathway is regulated so if you are writing about definition you are writing introduction in introduction you are explaining what is the location in what all organisms it takes place what is the significance of this particular pathway then you are going into the pathway right away drawing the pathway talking about it you then give the energetics overall reaction we call energetic or thermodynamic of the reaction very important so concluding you can also talk about how the pathway is regulated if you are adding a line on regulation of a pathway then i assume that you know about it very very well okay so you can do that as a uh, additional thing to make your answer a complete essay answer so it's very interesting about how you can learn about pathways in the exam so my suggestion is do not sit to prepare all this one day before the exam start doing it as and when you are learning the topic very important especially for biochemistry you can score very well if you are doing a consistent preparation one day batting you can never mug up the pathways you cannot practice the structures it's impossible you cannot do it because even if you mug them up in the examination you will not be able to recollect any structures or any pathways in the last minute so take it from me spend little time each day as and when you are learning the pathway make a notes that is very important notes that the way i am telling you now i challenge you that all of you will be able to score really well in biochemistry if you do that part of little homework if not every day if if you think every day is too much to spend time for learning something like biochemistry i think you can at least do it once a week sit down two pathways a week or three pathways a week start making a notes let's say carbohydrate metabolism one week take a nice a white page notebook start writing the way i gave you introduction significance or definition in uh, significance pathway pathway full fledged pathway with all the reaction sequences overall equation regulation done i'm sure wherever you represent this answer you will get a full marks for an essay question if you are doing it that way but again i repeat the day previous day of the examination it doesn't work that way you cannot practice you cannot mug up that's impossible so please spend that little time because because it's fun if you start loving that subject i'm pretty sure every time you write glycolysis on paper you will start liking it you will start enjoying drawing those structures putting them on paper so first thing is don't think that these are little too much for me i cannot understand pathways they are very complicated no in fact they are very beautiful if you know how to write them if you know the logic of how to present them well i think it's very easy that's the fun in writing it right so you will start enjoying writing these kind of reactions sequences and it they sound very simple specifically with carbohydrate metabolism the advantage is you will keep coming across the same molecules again and again same glucose same fructose same pyruvate so the reaction sequences are same molecules are the same if if you have learned those structures once or twice i think you can write them very comfortably so do that start preparing making your own notes okay uh and only that what is required to present in an examination is very important so that you you score really well okay then we have this question let's say an essay question asked on explain in detail the urea cycle and mention its disorders again my mantra is the same for any answer that you are writing start with the definition 
talk about the significance in the significance or introduction you can also add a location where that particular pathway takes place then straight going to the pathway so define what is urea cycle urea cycle is a series of biochemical reactions it helps in producing urea from urea then talk about the significance very important uh, why is urea cycle is important so it, it converts the toxic ammonia in the cells to urea therefore it is very important you can add one or two lines if you know about the significance of who discovered it when was it discovered any nobel prize winning work that was done associated to this you can add that kind of information any time okay then go into the pathway first draw a pathway so you can see on the screen how a urea cycle can be represented uh the uh sections where the particular pathway is taking place so you know the first reaction takes place in the mitochondrial matrix rest of it takes place in the cytoplasm so divide it how that particular reaction is taking place mention the names of the compounds involved then the enzymes involved okay so completely it's only a five reaction sequence very simple to learn and also mention uh, what are the five things involved in this process and what are the energy costs dynamics you can write either here or you can also write later then describe draw the pathway uh, and then how many enzymes are associated with it so as i said the one reaction takes place in mitochondria the other three reactions takes place in the cytosol so you can show the differentiation in the pathway where ornithine conversion takes place in the the first step of carbamoyl phosphate synthase takes place in the mitochondria rest of the cycle takes place in the cytosol represent that pathway clearly with all the enzymes then you talk about the steps now because this is only a four or five reaction sequence if you have time you can start describing each pathway each uh, reaction sequence what happens in one of those and what is the enzyme associated the same thing that you are drawing in the structure you are already drawing the structure first that's what i said once you draw the structure you are very clear you know what are the enzymes involved you know what is happening in the reaction start mentioning that then given overall reaction sequence how much of what is converted into what ammonia is converted into urea how much of atp is used and how much of energy is consumed that you can represent then the question is also asking you please read it carefully what is urea cycle significance and what are the disorders associated with it so in an examination it is always beneficial if you can represent differences and disorders in the form of a table now what instead of describing them in a structure if you can represent a schematic diagram in the form of a table this is easily understood by the examiner so the moment i look like this so talk about what is the disease what is the enzyme that is deficient and what are the features or you can talk about uh, what are the symptoms or the features of that particular disease you can represent simply it gives me an overall you may not include so much of information about every of the disease if you don't know but at least you can write what is the name of the disease what is the enzyme that is deficient and what are the symptoms that are associated with the disease i think that's very good i know very well that you are aware of the diseases and you are able to talk about them so this information is mandatory so always remember uh, wherever possible try to represent in the form of a tabular column tables will give a clear idea to the examiner that you know all the information so you are able to present it see generally what happens is only those students who haven't prepared anything will start writing descriptions in paragraphs without having any side heading so i myself in my two decades of experience i have corrected n number of papers where people start writing stories you know all the same questions again and again so please don't do like that because you're all science students you know the essence of learning science you should start liking that subject and i think uh, expressing what you have studied in an examination is also an art being able to represent it very well is an art okay so uh, that's where i think you can start using all this skill of representing them in tables diagrams structures so that tells the moment i open the paper uh, if there are some nice colored uh, you know representations underlines nice structures one or two tables then i know very well that the student is prepared for the examination so even if you have missed writing one or two structures or lines i would still give you a 13 on 15 thinking that you are a very good student and spent a lot of time preparing for the examination so and please take it from me i am only talking from the exams perspective but otherwise i am generally a teacher who concentrate and tell that you have to 
learn the subject first. It's very important. But of course, even if uh, you have a large amount of information with you, but you do not know how to represent it in the examination, I think you are you are failed as a student. Okay, so the perspective of a student should always be to learn the subject at the same time know how to represent it in the examination. So that's the whole idea of why we are conducting this webinar here because we observe that a lot of students uh, fall into a kind of unnecessary but have learned about all this during your theory classes. You know more about it. It's just that you should know how to present it in the examination. That is the whole purpose of this webinar. Uh, we will be extremely glad if at least some of you will pick it up from here and then start making your own notes, start making it an answer for every topic that you are learning, every topic that you're learning. You can write your own answer, thinking what is important to be represented in the examination, then I think uh, this is a success. Okay, right. Uh, so we are talking about the next question that is, let's say, define enzymes, explain the various factors influencing enzyme action. Okay, So here we have to define what are enzymes first. So as I said, you can talk about what an enzyme is, then talk how they catalyze the reaction, how are the important processes, what are enzymes, enzymes are the things or are molecules, if it they're also called as ribosomes. So in one line, I'm giving a lot of information I know about enzymes are not all enzymes are proteins, some enzymes are ribosomes. So you can just write it in one line. Then also add one or two lines about what is, how does enzyme does its job? The question is define enzymes, but it's not talking about enzyme action, but I can write two or three lines about what's an enzyme. You can say it has an catalytic site and then it has an active site where the substrate binds, binding of the substrate um certain catalysis and just write one line then directly go into uh here i just added um, uh, nomenclature or classification of enzymes the same i will show you if it's a short answer question i can only write this about nomenclature but if it's an essay question where they're asking you about enzymes and factors maybe i can just write a little bit about how the enzymes are classified if you find time and you can write it you can write about this here then list of factors influence uh, the activity of an enzyme. So they say first you list temperature, pH, then say enzyme concentration, substrate concentration. These are the ones that will influence the uh, activity of an enzyme. Then you can say start describing each. Now, what happens when the increase in the temperature, increase in the pH, enzyme, and substrate? Now, an average answer will look like this, where I'm just writing a lot of content. But the benefit is if I'm able to also show them in terms of small graphs. So you can just start writing when there is temperature, you say temperature. And if you take the absorbance values of how the activity is going on, then you will see that every enzyme will have what is called as an optimum pH or optimum temperature. So represent that in form of a small uh, schematic representation. So what is an optimum temperature? There are some enzymes which are active at low temperatures, some enzymes which are active at very high temperatures. So you can represent that in the form of a small gra graph this kind of graphical representations for factors affecting is very, very important to get a better score. Okay. Then same thing you can show for pH. You can show a representation where some enzymes are active at a pH 2, some are active at pH 6 or 7, some enzymes are active at pH 12. So here you also show pH and here you show absorbance values. Show a graphical representation and talk about what is an optimum pH for each enzyme. It differs. So you all, a quick uh, glance, if you look at enzymes, you know that some enzymes like pepsin, trypsin, they all work in the stomach. So they're active at an acidic pH. There are some enzymes like uh, uh, in, uh, that work with in basic rate, uh, like oxypeptidases, arginosaxinases, they all work in a very high range. So you can start representing, give examples, one or two examples of how enzymes are active at different pH and what is an optimum pH of an enzyme. You can show that. 
then you can also show how enzyme concentration or substrate concentration also will influence this is what your enzyme kinetics also will talk about so start representing it in the form of uh, a graph again here as a certain extent um so the applies to concentration and that on what happens with substrate you can go on increasing it to certain extent but after if you increase the substrate concentration is in the enzyme activity same thing happens with enzyme you can go on increasing the enzyme concentration but after some, some time the enzyme concentration doesn't change because there are no substrate molecules to get attached to it so describe that in a graphical representation so an average answer will be like this without any description but if it's a good answer good essay answer should also add some graphical representations right so that would be about questions it's very easy when we are able to write the essay questions that i think it's not difficult for us to write these short answer questions uh is it okay now is the presentation visible clearly right so having written essay answers very comfortably i think it's not at all difficult for us to write the short answer questions now the advantage to all the students if you are making a notes the way that i just described for every topic now the same notes will include an essay a short and a very short you don't have to prepare separately for short answer questions at all if you are doing a good job with your essay questions so for example let's say you have already prepared everything about enzymes you wrote what is an enzyme you defined enzymes you wrote about the classification of enzymes you wrote what are the factors influencing enzyme activity what are the um, mechanisms in how enzymes will work lock and key model induced fit model you've written if this notes is ready with you whether i ask you a question to write about define enzymes write what are holo enzyme active enzyme apo enzyme or describe active site of the enzyme or define classification of enzyme or talk about factors i have encompassed all my short answer questions in the essay question already so while you prepare for a topic don't just mug up and write pages of notes write only essay answers prepare essay answers for every topic given to you then automatically you are incorporating short answer questions in that so exclusively if i want to prepare a notes for a short answer question if i have to present it what are the component i will include i will only give definition i will talk about the significance of that particular pathway then i will talk about what is the important reaction if it is structure it's efficient if suppose the question has a structure or a reaction it's actually advantageous for me because i can gain more marks there then talk about the significance and energetics this is optional please remember in a short answer question writing about energetics even for that matter regulation is optional depending on the time depending upon the marks depending upon your interest to write because that is also true having written four very nice essay questions you will lose the interest so if you feel that you are the kind who will spend a lot of time on essay questions and you are not sure how much time you will be spent left with then what you can do is you can quickly finish off writing your very short and short answer questions then spend time on essay questions okay that absolutely is a personal choice of the student which to start first but if i i write uh, then what i do is i first write nice interesting essay answers and i keep a limit for myself i'll say 15 minutes per answer a four pages answer which includes all these side headings i would finish the examiner by then already knows that you know all the subject you're very good writing your answers so in short answer and you know, uh, very short answers 
okay so that's how i uh, that's how i assume see like how you prepare for the exam and write an exam from marks perspective an examiner also i will actually be waiting to look at nice biochemistry papers when i am correcting them you know i would actually be waiting to see if a student likes the subject presents them very nicely you know highlights the structures underlines them with color pencils shows a nice pathway equally a good paper very is marks okay so please understand that it's mutual you know uh, the exam paper has mutual love both from the person who writes and the person who reads it so understand that you need to write a good answer it a lot of love and you know uh, interest is also very important so excuse me with my unstable connection again i guess okay right so these are the headings uh, under which i would write if this is there right so let's say there is a question which says define amino acids classify as question which means i have possible to be my students now in this that i easy classifying what you do is first define just run line what are amino acids they are probably the building blocks of the proteins they have functional groups various and how i can classify them like you can write in a uh, continuous line just by side chain how i define them based upon their polarity how you can classify them so they are classified into aliphatic aromatic uh, hydrophobic hydrophilic or classify them based on r groups i divide them into polar nonpolar aliphatic aromatic hydrophilic and hydrophobic give any one kind of a classification define how you what are the different classes or you can see if it's nonpolar polar charged polar this is an easy for a short answer question just say they are divided into three important groups nonpolar uncharged polar charged polar non polar means all your aliphatic aromatic which don't have any polar groups will come into that category uncharged polar only amino acids like serine methionine uh, tyrosine which have a polar group but they are not charged you just get those five amino acids there then charged polar simple divide acidic basic to acidic amino acids three basic amino acids now in the examination in a short answer question if you are expected to write 20 structures and you don't have so much time two things you can do uh, avoid writing the backbone structure you can simply write you, you write like a tabular column glycine you can use the three letter abbreviation or the single letter abbreviation then draw the common structure is already there just in a tabular column put r group and write only the r group in the beginning you can show the backbone structure you can say amino acids will have an alpha carbon they have an amino group and they have a carboxylic group they have a h and an r group show this common structure then say r groups you classify just write the 20 r don't take much time so only once in the beginning of the answer show the common structure backbone structure of an amino acid then start writing the uh, 20 r groups in a suppose by chance you forgotten you don't remember all 20 side chain structures at least two or three per classification i mean show two uh, non polar aliphatic two aromatic uh, two charged and two uncharged that is one acidic one basic at least if you are able to write out of 28 structures if you are able to at least represent then out of a five marks question i would give three three and half if you write all 20 then i would straight away give you five marks but that's what from students perspective you might find it very difficult but uh, as a biochemistry teacher i suggest that learning these 20 amino acid structures is very important and you will remember them once you practice them you will remember them for a lifetime so don't take it like it's very difficult i like, can remember the structures no four nucleotide bases and 20 amino acid structures you have to learn them by heart and keep practicing okay uh, maybe i can give you a small hint of how we used to do it 
like when we were students and we when we were learning biochemistry then we used to do this like a quiz right whenever we have a lunch time uh, i quickly used to throw a chalk and tell my friend okay draw glycine draw aspartic acid so kind of like you know we used to do it like a fun game and then suddenly i would say come on tell me what is the formula of so and so um a structure or i would quickly say uh, i in the sense in the class anybody right we used to do this as a game like suddenly we used to say okay tell me what happens in glycolysis fructose one six bus phosphate breaks down to what okay so you can take it as a quiz you know do it with your friends so what happens is it should be embedded into your minds that this is fun learning is fun understanding biochemistry is fun and writing biochemistry in an exam is more fun so if you embed that in your minds i think writing an biochemistry exam is like the easiest and the most uh, wonderful experience you will have right then let's say write a brief note on formation and utilization of ketone bodies uh this kind of a question again ketone bodies can be asked in an essay or in a short okay so if it is if they are asking you ketone bodies in an essay question then you might have to write a little more about what ketone bodies are and give a full fledged pathway otherwise you can just define what ketone bodies are give it a significance in just two lines here i represented like a full fledged answer on the screen so that it's easy for you to write whether it is you know just a second so you can uh, you can do that write a full fledged answer about it if you think uh, uh, you can mention so much on ketone bodies give their uh, description talk about their significance why is formation specific ketone bodies play an important role in terms of the formation of ketone bodies describe what is ketogenesis whether it is beneficial whether it is harmful be aware about ketogenesis you can write all that if it's asked for an essay question but what i can do is if it's only for a short answer question i can just give the definition significance and i can directly go into the uh, pathway talk about how the because it takes formation of ketone bodies is also asked in the question so i can also write this particular pathway show what are the three different types of ketone bodies you can say acetoacetate beta hydroxybutyrate and acetone these are the three bodies then that also you can write three ketone bodies are and write those names clearly unlike here where i put it is a paragraph you can write it as lines okay write represent ketone bodies 1 2 3 write acetoacetate beta hydroxybutyrate or acetone so like that you start writing their names if possible next to acetoacetate write the structure next to acetone write the structure next to beta hydroxybutyrate write the structure then show the pathway and as i said for every short answer question if possible if you have regulation you can mention because specifically in ketone bodies the important part is you talk about the uh, regulation of the pathway so you mention that write about that regulation okay next these kind of questions are very easy when you have to talk about one particular pathway so here it is asking write a brief note on glyoxylate cycle so you can just define what is glyoxylate cycle it's a variation of tca cycle and where it takes place okay define what is the pathway what are the two enzymes that are different first what you can do is after this definition that you have written draw the diagram draw the pathway the pathway is self explanatory always remember why i am insisting on writing a full fledged pathway because if you are representing a pathway that's a kind of self explanatory i know that already you know everything what happens in the pathway so i look at this pathway i know that you are aware of it right then you can say in plants what is its significance you can talk about the importance of the pathway that's more than enough for a short answer question for a five marks answer this is more than enough because i have a self explanatory pathway that has already drawn with all the names of the enzymes so if i write this much also that's more than it enough for a short answer question then let's say you have a question on give, uh, give a short note on dna replication or semi conservative model or biosynthesis of the dna strand so first define you have a question like this because dna replication is a massive process very important process you just define what is dna replication is the process where dna genomes dna is copied then you talk about why replication is important 
because this is the process where the cells are divided. It helps in forming daughter cells. Then you can say two things you can do here. Suppose you want to introduce, then you can write. Uh, there are scientists who identified there are three models uh, for, uh, you know, in this semi-conservative, conservative, dispersive. You can give one image describing all the three. If you don't know so much about it and you have learned only semi-conservative model, you can totally avoid describing this directly, say, DNA replication takes place by semi-conservative model as discovered by Meselson and Stock. So Meselson and Stock mentioning is very important because they are the scientists who worked on this and the experiment is also famous. The semi-conservative model of DNA replication is also famous as the Meselson and Stock experiment because they proved the DNA replication takes place by semi-conservative method. If you don't know about these three models of how it takes place, what are the differences between conservative, dispersive and semi-conservative, avoid that. Don't write anything that you're not sure of. Instead, it is better you write simply what you know and write it correctly. That's important. Then you say, the what is the model? Then draw a simple representation. Always remember for questions like replication, transcription, translation, when you're learning, it might be very difficult to represent those complex images in the exam. So while you are making your notes, a suggestion that I would give is browse a lot of information. You can browse on the internet or in the textbooks that are prescribed or the notes, lessons you have. Pick up which images are easy for you to draw in the exam. For example, I picked up an image here which is very easy to represent only provided you have a two colors with you. Okay. And I suggest please carry color pencils with you for a biochemistry exam always because that is giving you an extra 10, 15 marks. Take it from me. So describe the Meselson and Stahl, how they proved that the semi-conservative model takes place. If you are not sure about drawing the Meselson and Stahl's experiment, like where you are drawing tubes, N14, N15, medium, if you find that diagram is very complicated, at least if you represent this model of DNA replication and how the experiment proved that semi-conservative model is there, that is more than enough. Because look at the question. It's not asking you to describe Meselson and Strauss experiment. It is asking you to write a short note on how DNA replication is semi-conservative. So if you just represent this part, show how it is semi-conservative, that's good enough. So talk about the experiment in two or three lines, show one diagrammatic representation. And as I said, again, suppose you don't know what is a conservative model, what is a dispersive model, you can as well leave it. Don't talk about it. Okay, talk about only semi-conservative model of replication. That is also enough because this is a short answer question. So don't worry about it. Okay, right. Then we have very short answer questions. Very easy, very comfortable. We know everything. We have written so much on essay, so much on short. So writing very short answer questions is not tough at all. So what are we required to write in a very short answer question? Now, remember, even if it is a very short answer question, you have, let's say, two marks or three marks for it. And this is like, uh, you know, uh, I don't know if you all watch uh, KBC. This is like that super sandhu for like a rapid fire question. Writing very short answer questions very well is an advantage because for two marks, even if you write three lines, I would give you one and a half. And if I write all the eight or 10 short answer questions, straight away, I would get 20 months there. Okay. So for anybody here, I hope none of you uh, join with that intention. But if your intention is just to pass the exam, then concentrate on this very short answer questions. Write all the short answer questions promptly. What is required? What is the question? One definition, one diagram. For two marks, I will give one and a half or two straight away. 10 short answer questions, 20 marks, you write, you attempt another two essay questions, you pass the exam. Please, I'm not telling you how to pass the exam. I'm, on, I'm only here to uh, brief, explain you about how to write your exam very well. But I know, I know I'm a teacher. I have taught batches of students. There might be some who are just concentrating how to pass this because you don't like biochemistry at all. And you find the learning pathways is very tough, very difficult. You don't understand anything. It goes above your head. Then say, Learn the learn at least some basic structures, definitions. Write all the short answer questions very well. Write two short two as uh, very I mean write all very short answer questions promptly. Two short answer questions and two essays done. You pass the paper. Okay, so gunshot essay questions. Prepare some of those as I said pathways. But you have to do 
even to get that 30 40 marks and pass the exam you have to do hard work it's not that you can write a cock and bull stories and pass the exam you can never do that not with biochemistry you have to prepare you have to learn at least three or four structures pathways and some major uh, things about enzymes, enzyme regulation, at least two, three major essay questions from each unit. From the same essays, you can draw some short answer and very short answer questions. So I have an example here, very interesting question, right? The differences between DNA, RNA, it's a very short answer question. So otherwise, you can see that there is a textbook of information on what is DNA, but you are expected to write what is DNA for a two marks question. What would you do? Just say there are types of nucleic acids. What are they made up of? Sugar, nitrogenous base, phosphate. What is the difference? In DNA, the sugar is deoxyribose. RNA, it is ribose. DNA, you have ATGC. RNA, you have uracil. That's it. Show a small tabular column. Draw the structure. Sugar, deoxyribose here, ribose here, base, thymine here, uracil here. Done. For this, if I write like this, two marks out of two, I will give you straight away if I have the just the structures of the sugars and the base. Okay, at least if you write one difference, major difference, sugar, deoxyribose, their ribose sugar, I will give you one and a half marks. So this I think is not tough for all of you to prepare. Anybody who is learning biochemistry will be able to do this, right? Then let's say you have a question, discuss about the nomenclature and IUB classification of enzymes. Then again, what you can do here, just one line definition, straight away go that they are classified based upon International Union of Biochemistry, each gets a EC number, five classes, write down each of these. If you know, if you know, you can write one example, name of an enzyme here, one name example for everything. Like for example, oxidoreductases, you can write alcohol dehydrogenase is an example. If you do not know, it's okay, because it's just a two mark question. And the question asks a nomenclature and classification, it's not asking you examples. So even if you write this part of it, all the six classes, their names also is enough. I will give one and a half marks if you write that, okay? As I said, if you have, if the question has a structure or a reaction, you are saved. Because if you know that, you will get full marks. So define transamination, deamination, decarboxylation. If you write like this, I will give full marks. Just define what is transamination. Uh, then say, what is the reaction? One reaction. Again, if you're not clear, you don't know so much amount of reactions you don't know. Then just mention what is transamination, where one amino group is transferred. So there is another amino acid that is created. So two new amino acids come up. Transaminases are the enzymes involved. Transamination is carried out by transaminases. Done. Deamination, what is this? Removal of amino group from this. And there is, it can be oxidative deamination catalyzed by enzymes like dehydrogenases. Write the name of the enzyme. Decarboxylation, enzymes involved, decarboxylases. That's it. Just write what is the reaction, what is the enzyme involved. If you know one line significance, otherwise it is also okay, I will give one and a half. If you are able to write these kind of reactions, two on two or three on three, you will get full marks if you know the reaction sequences. But if you think it's a very short answer question and I want to, don't want to spend so much of energy mugging up all these reaction sequences, and if you find amino acid metabolism is very tough and you cannot pick up so many reactions, that's absolutely okay. Define what is transamination, what is deamination, what is decarboxylation, you're good to go, okay? Right? So like this, like we can talk about a lot of answers, lot of... Um, hints and clues and suggestions of how you can make your answer. So the bottom line of my whole presentation, what I'm trying to explain it to all of you is understand. First thing, I have repeated it so many times, I repeat it once again. One day batting doesn't work for biochemistry. You cannot learn, mug up, practice all the structures in one day. Don't do that. Don't do that mistake of neglecting biochemistry practice. At least do it once a fortnight or once a week. Take a notebook, maintain a notebook for your own self. Take a nice prescribed textbook. Read it, write down. Write how much of it you comprehend as a student. The headings that I gave. Introduction, significance, location, pathway, regulation or diseases. Write answers like that. From the same essay answer, you can derive your short answer questions. Do this homework, 
for all the units of biochemistry, all the reaction sequences, all the structures, then I think you are a good biochemistry student. And eventually you will start liking it. Eventually you will be able to write them very well. You will be able to you know, uh, do a real uh, good job, right? So here in Prakara, they have started this very unique idea of a mini learning program. Uh, so what you can do is every semester, like all the topics that you have, if you want to really do very well, you can access this uh, for a very minimal charge. You can take a trial pack. And then what it encompasses, this mini learning program, is like you have video lectures, you have notes, all the key terms are described. You also have an access for self-assessment. You can do that. All the papers that are associated with for your course, like for B Pharmacy, you have a mini learning program. So all the topics are covered in this. The video lectures are provided. We will give you necessary notes. Now, please remember here, again, it is not like a textbook. We don't dump you with so much of information that you will not be able to comprehend. Only that what is required for you to prepare for the examination, you will be given here in this particular mini learning program. So I think personally, I feel that this MLP is a wonderful idea. It's a nice uh, 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 you know, module that is prepared for the students to you know, be exam ready. Okay. And personally, as a teacher, I feel that, you know, what happens most of the times is classroom learning is the first step. You listen to your teacher, you understand the topic, you like the topic, don't like the topic, but you will have to, uh, you know, eventually uh, listen to the classes and maybe take your running notes. But most of the times what happens is when it comes to Preparing for an examination, you're lost. You don't know. There is a lot of information in the notebook. There is so much of information in the textbook, but you may not be very aware of how much of it you have to learn for an examination, how much of it you have to present on a paper, you know, uh, how much is good enough to get full marks or, you know, what amount of information that you should represent in the given stipulated two and a half hours or three hours of time. So all this understanding crisp notes is what is very important. So if you as a student don't have so much of experience to make that crisp notes and you know, uh, limited information that is required, then here is the ML program that will help you give you that necessary information, required notes for preparing for the examination. So I think if you can access this, take advantage of things that are provided here, I think you're good to go. I mean, uh, probably um, 20, 25 years ago when we were students, there was no such options available. We had to sit in the library, spend a lot of time, do all the uh, work on our own, make, prepare notes, and you know, go to a Xerox center, spend a lot of time, get all that information. But now I think with these kind of modules and programs available for all of you online, just with a, you know, uh, you access Prakara's uh, YouTube. I think uh, there are a lot of videos which will help you uh, sail through your examination fever very easily. Okay, so you can subscribe to the YouTube channel and then you can access to these kind of MLP programs. So that makes, I think, education, learning more easier. That's also equally important because you're in a challenging world. You have a lot of opportunities that you have to grab every day. So you have to be exam ready. You have to be job ready. You have to be market ready every day. So accessing these kind of programs will definitely help you. So any questions you can post here, we can discuss for the next five minutes before we close the session. Um, are there any questions or any queries that we need to address? Oh, Ma'am, as of now, uh, no, no queries were being posted by the students. So you can please proceed. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So I think uh, that's we come to the end of the presentation. Anything else that uh, I need to add here for the students? I mean, unless there are questions, there isn't. I think I have repeated. I have told everything that you need to understand. So you can, uh, I mean, uh, whoever is accessing the video can go through any any significant questions that you want to be described. You know how you want to write. You can do that. Okay. So we can wait for another few minutes for the questions. Uh, or else we can close the session. We are we are available anytime. Please access the uh, Prakara channel or the app. You can 
take up this MLP program and learn more about it. Okay. So I think uh, uh, we explained few sample questions here, but students who are keen to know more about it, if you have specific questions, you are lost, you don't know how to write an answer for a particular topic, then I think we definitely can help you. We can uh, you know, guide you through how to do it. And our program is meant for that. So you can access it and get benefited.